In Newtonian physics, relative velocity is the velocity of an object or a particle that accounts or considers the velocity of the observer, someone who is measuring the velocity of the object. And the observer is also known as the frame of reference in physics. Relative velocity can also be thought of as the difference in velocity between an object whose velocity is being measured and the observer. That is a frame of reference. In terms of vectors, relative velocity can be determined via vector subtraction. That is the relative velocity is equal to the velocity of the object minus the velocity of the observer. Let's say you're running on the side of a road at 5 minutes per second, while a car is traveling in the same direction at 30 minutes per second. Because you're traveling in the same direction as the car, the velocity of the car observed by you will seem to be slower than 30 minutes per second. This velocity that's been measured by you who's running is called the relative velocity. The velocity of the car is 30 minutes per second, while the velocity of the runner, that is the observer, is 5 minutes per second. And both, of course, are going to the right. That means the relative velocity of the car is equal to its own velocity, so its true velocity, 30 minutes per second, minus the velocity of the observer, that is a runner, so 5 minutes per second. This gives you a value of 25 minutes per second to the right. In other words, from the perspective of the runner, who's going in the same direction as the car, the car will appear to be slower, traveling at 25 minutes per second to the right. What about the relative velocity of the runner? from the perspective of the car. Well, in this case, the velocity of the runner relative to the car is equal to the true velocity of the runner, which is five minutes per second to the right, minus the velocity of the car, which is the observer, that is 30 minutes per second. And this gives minus 25 minutes per second. The minus here indicates that the velocity is heading the other way, to the left. So it's 25 meters per second to the left. This means from the perspective of the car, the runner will appear to be going backwards towards the left at 25 meters per second. That is the velocity of the runner relative to the car. Now, what happens if the runner is running at five meters per second, but this time in the opposite direction as the car? How does the relative velocity differ in this scenario compared to the previous one? The velocity of the car relative to the person is still 30 minutes per second minus the velocity of the runner. But now the velocity of the runner is heading towards the left, which is in the negative direction. So this will be negative 5. This gives us a relative velocity of the car of 35 minutes per second to the right. In other words, when the runner is running in the opposite direction as the car's motion, the car will appear to be traveling faster at 35 minutes per second to the right. Conversely, the velocity of the runner relative to the car will be its velocity, which is minus 5 minutes per second, minus the velocity of the car, which is 30 minutes per second. And this gives us minus 35 meters per second, which is equivalent to 35 minutes per second to the left. So from the perspective of the car, the runner is also appearing to go faster to the left at 35 meters per second. Relative velocity of objects can also be determined when they are in two dimensions. Suppose that there are two cars. Car A is traveling north at 10 minutes per second, and car B is traveling towards the east direction at 10 minutes per second as well. The first question is, what is the relative velocity of car B relative to car A? In other words, what is the velocity of car B measured by someone in car A? So the relative velocity here is the velocity of the measured object, which is the velocity of car B, minus the velocity of car A. So that's the observer. When the vectors are in two dimension, we cannot subtract the magnitudes directly because we need to account for the direction. This is where we need to apply vector subtraction. This equation can be written as the velocity vector of car B plus the negative velocity vector of car A. The velocity vector of car B is heading to the right at 10 meters per second, 
and the negative velocity vector of car A is heading towards the south at 10 meters per second, since its original vector is heading towards the north. If we want to find a negative vector, we simply reverse the direction while keeping the magnitude the same. When we are adding vectors together, we'll simply find the resultant vector. So we're drawing the tail of one vector towards the head of the other vector, such that it becomes a hypotenuse of a right angle triangle. This hypotenuse is my relative velocity because it is equal to the velocity of car B plus the negative velocity vector of car A. The magnitude of this relative velocity is given by 10 squared plus 10 squared square root. This gives a value of 14 meters per second. And of course, we need to also find the angle. Let's call that angle theta here. So 10 theta is equal to 10 over 10, which means theta is equal to 45 degrees. So my final answer is 14 meters per second at an angle of east 45 degrees south. Alternatively, you can write this as a true bearing, which is 135 degrees as a true bearing. This is the velocity of car B relative to car A. Now, let's look at the same scenario, but we'll calculate the velocity of car A relative to car B. This relative velocity is equal to the velocity vector of car A minus the velocity vector of the observer, which is car B. And this is equivalent to V of car A plus the negative velocity vector of car B. The velocity vector of car A is heading to the north at 10 meters per second, and the negative velocity vector of car B is heading towards the west at 10 meters per second. To find the resultant vector that is a relative velocity in this scenario, we join the tail of one vector to the head of the other. So that becomes the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle. As we previously calculated, the magnitude of this vector is 14 meters per second, and the angle is 45 degrees. This means the relative velocity of car A to car B is 14 meters per second. If we draw the directions, this is north, this is east, this is south, and this is west. This angle here covers three quarters of revolution, so this is 270 degrees. That means a true bearing, which will give us the direction of this velocity vector, will be 270 degrees plus 45 degrees, which equals to 315 degrees true bearing. This is the velocity of car A relative to car B. A plane travels in the north direction at 720 km per hour through a crosswind that blows in the west direction at 45 km per hour. What is the velocity of the plane relative to the station observer on the ground? So the plane's velocity is heading towards the north at 720 km per hour and the crosswind applies a velocity on the plane at 45 km per hour to the west. The relative velocity that's measured by the observer is the sum of the plane's velocity vector and the crosswind's velocity minus the velocity of the observer. But in this scenario, the velocity of the observer is zero as they are stationary. So really, the relative velocity is the sum or the resultant vector of the velocity of the plane and the velocity of the wind. So if we move the wind's velocity vector over such that we can draw a hypotenuse to the right angle triangle, we can then find the resultant velocity vector, that is my relative velocity. So this vertical side is 720 and the horizontal side is 45. So the relative velocity can be calculated by using Pythagoras theorem, 45 squared plus 720 squared or square root. This gives 721 kilometers per hour. We can find this angle here theta to describe the direction. Tangent theta is equal to 720 divided by 45, so the opposite over the adjacent side, theta equals to 86 degrees. We can better describe the direction by finding the complementary angle by subtracting 86 from 90. This gives 4 degrees. The relative velocity then is therefore 721 kilometers per hour, north 4 degrees west. A boat travels across a 500 meter wide river at 15 meters per second south. The current in the river flows at 4 meters per second to the west. So let's say I have a river 
and the width of the river is 500 meters. This is the north, and this is the south bank of the river. And we're given that there's a boat that's heading across the river at a given velocity v. And of course, the river current has its own velocity heading towards the west at 4 meters per second. What is the velocity of the boat relative to the stationary person on the bank? Let's draw the velocity vectors of the boat and the current more clearly. The velocity of the boat is heading south at 15 meters per second, while the velocity of the current is heading towards the west at 4 meters per second. The velocity of the boat relative to a stationary person on the bank is the resultant vector of these two velocities because the boat's motion or velocity relative to the person will be affected by the current's velocity to the west. So we'll draw a resultant vector by adding the two together such that we form a right angle triangle. Velocity v here is equal to 4 squared plus 15 squared or square root. This gives 15.5 meters per second as a speed. We can calculate the angle here to provide the direction. Let's call the theta. Tangent theta is equal to 4 divided by 15. So theta equals to 14.9 degrees. So the velocity is 15.5 meters per second south, 14.9 degrees west. How far downstream does the current move the boat by the time it crosses the river? Now, we know the boat travels south at 15 meters per second, and the distance between north and south of the riverbank is exactly 500 meters. That means the time taken by the boat to cross the river is equal to the displacement in the vertical direction divided by its velocity in the vertical direction, which is approximately 33 seconds. Now, in the 33 second, remember that the boat is also traveling towards the west at 4 meters per second as a result of the river's current. In other words, the 15 meters per second velocity vector helps the boat cross the river from north to south, while the 4 meters per second velocity vector pushes the boat towards the west by a certain displacement. So we can say the horizontal displacement on this diagram is equal to the horizontal velocity vector, 4 meters per second, multiplied by 33 seconds, which is 133 meters to the west.